right, so here we are talking about cladograms. And uh, this is part of section 18.2 in your textbook. And we're talking about modern evolutionary classification. Okay, so we started off with Linnaean, or Carolus Linnaeus, and and his order of classification with the kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. And um, if you are unfamiliar with that, you might need to look at section 18.1 for a quick review on that. Um, but Darwin had some ideas about a tree of life. So with, with Linnaeus, he thought we should classify things by how they look. Okay, so we're looking at, he's talking about physical structures. So Linnaean was physical, and Darwin was looking at evolutionary relationships. So we're going to be talking mainly about evolutionary classification. So what's the goal of evolutionary classification? Well, first of all, we're looking at phylogeny, okay, which is kind of like evolutionary, uh, what it means, evolutionary classification. And you group species into categories by their evolutionary line of descent, by their evo how they're related, their common ancestors, rather than similarities and differences. So for example, on the left, this is how uh, we have a barnacle, a limpet, and a crab, how they would be classified if you're looking at similarities of how they look. Whereas with evolutionary lines, these are more related. The crab is more related to the barnacle as opposed to the limpet being more related, or cl more closely related rather, to the barnacle. So, so try to get that out of your mind that, oh, well, it's a crocodile and an alligator. They must be more closely related. Okay, we're going to look at common ancestor, common ancestor. So how did he come up with this, this phylogeny, the study of living and extinct organisms and how they're related to one another? Well, this came from his concept of descent with modification. Remember he said that all organisms have are related to a common ancestor. They've just been modified a little bit, or maybe a lot, depending on the organism. So here is a very, very basic cladogram. And let me move this up a little bit. OK. And here's where the common ancestor would be, where my cursor is right down here. And then some type of adaptation occurred. And some of them got it. And some of them didn't get the adaptation. Those that didn't would branch off. When I say branch off, that's just uh, uh, the term that I use on the clade because there's going to be, looks like little branches coming off of it. So uh, what's a clade? It's a group of species that have a common ancestor. And all of its descendants of that ancestor are either living or extinct. So one thing that's important that you need to, to understand is that a clade has to be monophyletic. Monophyletic, meaning it has to have all the species from that common ancestor. And there cannot be any in there that are not from that common ancestor. Okay, so here's a cladogram. And when you look at this, uh, it links organs by showing how the evolutionary lines are there. So looking at this one, okay, um, okay. So when you're looking at this time, it's on the bottom axis, on the x-axis, and it goes this way. So going this way would be more recent. And then this would be in the past. So sharks branched out from that. This is where the common ancestor would be. So sharks branched out before ray-thin fishes, before amphibians, etc. And then the last ones will be mammals. And so nothing has branched out on those yet. Okay. So this cladogram, this cladogram illustrates how groups of organisms are related to one another. And it shows evolutionary lines or lineages of common ancestors. So this cladogram illustrates how groups of organisms are related to one another. It shows lineages or the branching off from common ancestors. So when you build a cladogram, the bottom will be the root of the tree. Some of them kind of look this way. Um, but usually the splitting event kind of goes over maybe like right here. So this would be the ancestral lineage. This is where the common ancestor is. And then this is where that event may have happened. 
And when it says event happened, it's talking about some type of adaptation that some got and then some didn't. Those that didn't get it would go, would branch off. So, for instance, here, okay, so here, here would be a they're called derived characters which I'll talk about in just a minute but here's the splitting event so something happened here these guys didn't get it these guys did okay so it's immediately wherever it branches off right before that is the characteristic um, that it that it has okay but how can I put this another way? Okay, wherever it branches, here's the splitting event, so where the new characteristic showed up, and these guys didn't get it. So here is a new characteristic, right? These guys didn't get this characteristic, okay? So if you look at these two, the way you can tell who is more closely related to who Okay, don't just say which one is closer on the cladogram. What you have to look at is where the common ancestor is. Remember, time goes this way. So this is present, and then this is past, right? Okay, so if the common ancestor, there's one common ancestor here, the other common ancestor here. So if we're looking at number two, who is number two more closely related to? Number four? Or number one. And remember, you can't go by who they are closer to on the cladogram. You got to look how recent is the common ancestor. How recent is the common ancestor? Okay, the more recent, the closer, the more closer, or the closer, the more closely they are related. So, if we're looking at two and four, who would they be more closely related to? That's right, four, because the common ancestor is more more recent. Okay, let's do the same thing with these guys. You got amphibians, right? Are they more closely related to mammals or fish, ray fin fishes? Now look where the common ancestor is. So for ray fin fishes, amphibians' common ancestor would be here, right? Somewhere around here. For mammals, it's going to be here. So looking at time, which one is it? That's right, mammals. Okay. Amphibians are more closely related to mammals than they are to fish. Doesn't seem like they would be, but they are using this cladogram. So a derived character would be kind of like a characteristic. It's a trait that arose in a most recent common ancestor and was passed along to descendants. So here's backbone. So all of these animals have a backbone. Here's hair. All of these have hair. Now if you notice, they branch off right before this new derived character. So for instance, this is carnivorous meat-eating teeth. That's what that says. So who didn't get it? Horse don't have it. Horses don't have these teeth. Uh, wolves do. Leopards and cats do. So whether or not a character is derived depends on the level. So for example, if you're looking at, let's look at this right here. A derived character is going to be the one that arose in the most recent common ancestor for the lineage. So the derived character for horses would be hair. The derived character for wolves would be the carnivorous meat-eating teeth. The derived character for leopards would be retractable claws. It's always the derived character right before it branches off. Okay. So hair is a derived character for mam mammals, but not for limbs. Okay. So if you look at this here, uh, all of these have four limbs, right? But they're all not mammals, are they? Okay. So it has to be the character that's that's derived just for th that group or right prior to that group. So example of losing traits 
they usually don't use those as derived characters because um, they may or may not be closely related because they've lost those traits. So for instance, uh, remember when we talked about the whales, the whales lost their leg? Snakes also lost legs, but they are nowhere near closely related as far as snakes and whales. Remember, whales are mammals, and then snakes are reptiles. So this shows a simplified phylogeny of the cat family. Okay, here's the cat family. So it's in the clade Philidea. It's also in the clade Carnivora. It's also in the clade Mammalia. It's also in the clade Amniota, and it's also in the clade Tetrapoda. Okay, it just depends on which characteristics we're looking at. So the lowest node would represent the clade Tetrapoda. Four limbs. Tetra means four. Pod means foot. So they have four feet. Okay, and this can show you how they branch off over the course of evolution. Okay. I've kind of already explained most of this to you already. All right. And if you're in class, we will try to make a little simple um, cladogram by hand. And then you have an activity you do where you analyze and make a little uh, cladogram. So if you have any questions on this, be sure to ask your teacher. And uh, that stops this video. Thank you.